online, brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Today we are reading from First Samuel chapter nine. We have Pastor Jason sharing. We are on this first uh, another part. Now Saul appeared. Chapter how did chapter nine begin? Because when Samuel was old. He uh, he said his he made his judges his sons judges over Israel chapter eight verse one, but yet his sons did not walk in his ways verse three. So that's why all the elders of Israel gathered together. And said to him, "I don't want your son to be judge over us. Can you set, give us a king to judge us?" We are on chapter eight. Samuel was upset, so he went to speak to God, uh, pray to God, and God said to the Lord, said to Samuel, "They are not rejecting you; they rejecting me." Verse seven of chapter eight. Just heed their voice. Now we are on chapter nine. God understood, understood that the Israelites rejected him. But it feels like as a as a father, your son wants something, kept nagging you for that. Then at the end, the father gives that to the son. When I read this chapter today. I think God is God was of a mixed feelings. The first one, he knew that the Israelites rejected him. In chapter eight, verse seven, for they have not rejected you; they have rejected me. So God decided to give them a king. So God also has prepared a kingly system for the Israelites, and yet the time was not right. But as man kept nagging this for God from God, then God gave it to them. That's the heart of God in chapter eight. And then now in chapter nine, verse verse sixteen. Tomorrow, about this time, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him commander over my people Israel, that he may save my people from the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people, because their cry has come to me. Chapter nine, verse sixteen. 十六節呢度講到神同撒母耳講明嘅這時候，我必使一個人從便雅悯地到你這裏來。你要高他作我民以色列的君，他必救我民脱離非利士人的手，因我民的哀聲上達於我，我就眷顧他們。Because they cry, my people, their cry has come to me. Their cry? Well, but in chapter eight, they rejected God, did they not? They complain against God, did they not? But here is like their cry. I think God understands our suffering, our anguish. We they so wanted to have a king to rule over them. They were so afraid that when Samuel was old, he died. What will happen? They worry so much. They were so anxious. They didn't know what to do. So on one hand, they were in anguish, their heart, Israelites. On the other hand, they just kept nagging God to have a king. Under that situation, God understood. That man rejected him, and yet God also understands their suffering. God's patience is beyond our imagination. The title for chapter nine is "Wait Faithfully and Prepare Ourselves." We must wait that the timing of God is perfect. It's the best. 
do not push God. If you push God, it's like the fruit is not ready and yet you try to pick it from the tree. Right? You try to push God. God, God listen to you. God tries to give you the best outcome, but yet the outcome is not that good. So the chosen person was quite innocent. I didn't want to be king. <laughs> but how is it's me become a con? And then I die a horrible death. That's so right. That's not really good, is it? What should we do then? We wait patiently, faithfully, wait for God's timing. We get ourselves ready. Now uh, we go back to the uh, chapter. So God finds a person that is a soul. Wow, he had a strong background. <laughs> Look at the genealogy. Starting from Kish, <laughs> uh, Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zero, the son of uh, Bakarav, the son of Abiel, a Benjamin, a mighty man of power. That's his background, genealogy. Starting from his great great grandfather all the way. So he is of good background, strong background. And he himself was a man of power, mighty man of uh, power. And also, he, that means he's wealthy. It must be the you know the, the dream husband for all women, tall, rich, handsome, wealthy background. What more can you ask for? Where's two choice and handsome? There was not a more handsome person than he among the children of Israel. From his shoulders upward, he was taller than any of the people. He must be the top player in basketball. Were, were on. Wow. From his shoulders upward, he was taller than any of the people. Wow, he looked so good. But God did not choose him because of his outlook. God chose him because he was faithful. God chose him because he was faithful in small things. Now, donkeys of cage were lost. Saul's father, verse 3. So, Kish said to his son, Saul, Take one of your servants with you and arise and go and look for the donkeys. So he passed through the mountains of Ephraim. I will show you a map of the mount uh, and show you how faithful he was in looking for the lost donkey. He started, he was a Benjamin living up. Uh, uh, please show the map when it's ready. <laughs> well, uh, I will try to keep it simple. Oh, yes, here it comes. In Chinese. <laughs> uh, starting from Gibeah. And go to the mountains of Ephraim. And then uh, went to the land of Cilicia. And then all to the uh, land of Shalim. And then went back to ben Benjamin. He made a circle here. He didn't find the donkeys. So he went a bit further down. Came to the land of Suf. And then they returned to the mountain of Ethereum. Fifteen kilometers. Uh, a section is fifteen kilo kilometers. I think he had walked um, two hundred kilometers in order to find uh, his father's donkeys. Two hundred kilometers. A rich man, handsome man of a big family, spent few days looking for lost donkeys. That's his faithfulness. He is serious, he is loyal, he is faithful. 
He was faithful in small things. We faithfully we look for donkeys, lost donkeys. God is looking for vessels. We are faithful in small matters. God will commit to us big things. As he is making detour, making looking around, walking around 200 kilometers, and then he went all the way to the land of Suf where Samuel dwelt. Verse 5, when they had come to the land of Suf where Samuel dwelt. Verse 5. Saul was faithful. He was uh, honoring his father. He was close to his father's heart. I think he had spent three days looking for lost donkeys. Uh, in the later on, as we read on, we know that they had spent three days to appoint that, oh, that's the time I think my father would start worry about us. Verse 5, he says here, I should go back, let us return. Our donkeys, oh, forget about the donkeys. Donkeys were important. I had walked like 200 kilometers already. I think now my father sees worrying, caring about the donkeys. He became worried about us. To a man is something so hard. And yet, so he was able to understand his father's feeling. He was faithful, he was caring, and honoring his father. That's a vessel God is looking for. God has chosen this vessel, but the vessel was not ready. After we are being chosen, we need to continue to get ourselves ready, prepare ourselves. Oh, don't think, oh, I'm chosen. Okay, I'm all good. How do we know that he was not ready here? How do we know? Verse 6, look now, there is in this city a man of God and his honorable to honorable man. All that he says surely comes to pass. So let us go there. Perhaps he can show us the way that we should go. Verse 6. So, was a farmer. Uh, he was a farmer. He focused on his farming. You know, you, you, if you were a farmer, you need to get up early in the morning before the sun rises. And then after the sun sets, you you, after dinner, you will rest. You will sleep. So he didn't care much about the world. Or he he had no idea what the world was going on. Now he came to the land of Suf, the hometown of uh, Samuel. But it's like he didn't know about Samuel, the man of God, existing. It's a recommendation from his servant. So he said, yeah, of course, let's go, let's go. It's quite an easy going. Well, you see, we got no bread, no no presents to bring to the man of God. At that time, there and then, Saul was quite a close person. He wasn't ready to open up. He didn't know about Samuel, the great man of God. And when he did meet Samuel, he said, oh, do, do you know Samuel? Do you know where Samuel lived? <laughs> a bit further down. I think, you know, Samuel, the great man of God, yeah, he was like walking on the street. People would be like, oh, wow, that's Samuel, something like this. Okay. Because he was to bring sacrifice. And then he will walk up to Sam, uh, Samuel and say, Hey, do, do, please tell me where is the CEO's house. That's verse 18. That's 
he didn't know what what went on. He was quite ignorant to what's going on in the world. His servant knew about Samuel, yet he didn't. He was un um close to the spiritual realm. But even so, we were faith. We are faithful in small things. God sees us. So when this person uh, draw close, when God uh, chooses chose him, God make sure that he found Samuel, such a close person. Even after big detour, uh, God brought him to Samuel. Everything is in the hand of God. I, when I read it today, I felt like it was God who made the donkeys go astray. Verse 16, Tomorrow about this time I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin, and you shall anoint him commander over my people Israel. It's God who brought some uh, saw there, but saw came four donkeys. God let donkey go astray first. Then the father told Saul, and then Saul put one of his servants. Uh, Saul got one of the servants, and this servant brought him to Samuel. <laughs> God is able to make everything happen under His guidance. Guidance. Or oh, we must trust that God. However impossible it looks, God can make all things possible. So God let the few donkeys go astray. Yet they also, the donkey also went, got back. They they managed to find. They have been found. Verse twenty. So everything is in the arrangement of God. But what are the conditions of man? When Sam, uh, when Samuel saw, uh, saw verse twenty one here, and Saul answered and said, "Am I not a Benjamin of the smallest tribes of Israel, and my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? Why then do you speak like this to me?" Verse twenty one. The first one is, am I not the smallest of the, am I not a Benjamin, Benjamite, of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? Benjamin was the youngest in the, uh, Jacob's son. His youngest, and in the book of Judges, there was a great uh, civil wars, and only six hundred men of the Benjamin was left, survived. That's in the book of Judges. People have like other tribes who have like few tens of thousands, and yet the Benjamin only have like six hundred people left, survived. So, physically, he was the youngest. Uh, number wise, yes, they have the list. Yes, um, yes, the Benjamin was the smallest of the tribes of Israel. That's correct. But when say when my family, the list of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin, why then do you speak like this to me? There's something not quite right here. He is a big wealthy people. He was saying that I'm the least of all Israel. That's how he put it. 
Our tribe is the smallest, and I'm the smallest in the our family is the least of the whole tribe. I'm the least of the list, basically. <laughs> I am the most, the lowest in the whole Israel. That's over. That's too much. Your family is so rich. And then you are, he is tall and strong. You are tall, you are strong, you are handsome, you are rich, wealthy, and you think you are the least of all Israel. So he's not trying to be polite. He wasn't. It feels like he's just too reserved, too withdrawn. He's, he's a farmer, remember? He was a farmer. He can nothing about the world, the what's going on. Farmer, you farm by yourself, right, in the field. He didn't have any people to speak to him, share. so he was like a, so we served. He was not trying to be polite or or humble himself. No, that's not that's not what what he was trying to do. He really had not heard about Samuel, and now he went up to Samuel and say, "Where is the seer's house? Please tell me." That reflected his inner state had a very low self image. Very we didn't know why he thought like that of himself. He was tall, rich, and yet he has such low self-image. But he was chosen. That's the beginning of Saul. He was started because he was faithful in small things. He was seen. He was chosen. We are being chosen by God due to different uh, situations, circumstances. We are in that process. We were quite immature when we first uh, start to serve God. However long you have served God, it doesn't mean that you have matured. We still have a lot of rooms of improvement. We need to continue to prepare ourselves because as our statue continues to grow beyond your ability, it will cause a lot of problems. At the end, you may have a bad outcomes and you may harm yourself and people around you. Saul was a very good son. I believe he was a good father too. When he went to fight the war, his three sons followed him. He was a good father. Uh, his sons listened to him. He had some excellent qualities. That's why he was chosen by God. God thought that he was the best in that generation. And he needed to continue to prepare himself. If he had not prepared himself, if he did not prepare himself, he would have a very sad ending. God didn't destine him to fail. God wanted him to succeed. God didn't say that, okay, I can tell that you will fail. No, God entrusted mission to him. You are to deliver Israel, save my people from the hand of the Philistines. Verse 16. 
That's the mission from God to Saul. He did it diligently, but at the end, he was not prepared. He was not ready. We ask that God will help us. We faithful in our work. We faithfully wait. We do not just let our time pass. No. We must prepare ourselves. When time is right, God can use us in an even more special way. But we must get ourselves ready. May God help us. Let's worship our God. That's the end of our message today.